Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on. Mm, that's nice. That's an old friend. That's an old friend kind of coffee. Here it is right here. <laughs> you can probably just see it right there at the corner of the screen. Joe from Trader Joe's. This is a wonderful coffee. Medium roast, 100% Arabica ground coffee. Uh, just a terrific, terrific, terrific uh, coffee. And yeah, I'm getting down to my last little bit, so I'm gonna have to go back to Trader Joe's and uh, get some more of that and see what else they have in the specialty coffees. Because usually, uh, I guess season to season, month to month, whatever it is, whatever their, their cycle is, they will uh, put in a, um, a different flavor coffee or a different kind of coffee. So I'm looking forward to, to getting some more Joe and then seeing what else they have on the shelves. Uh, really kind of, uh, kind of neat, the kind of different coffees they come out with. But uh, my coffee mug today is uh, the National Cartoonist Society coffee mug. Yeah, there it is right there. There is the symbol, the logo rather, of the National Cartoonist Society. The symbol, the logo. And uh, founded on March 1st, 1946. So this year, the National Cartoonist Society is 75 years old. Yeah. So it's uh, been a great honor to be part of such a prestigious cartooning organization. And through that organization, I got to meet a lot of my childhood heroes from the funny pages. So that's really nice. So that's why we're using the, uh, the National Cartoonist Society mug. Just wanted to mention it's going to be 75 years old. Uh, wanted to do it before I forgot because March 1st, before you know, it's going to be here. All right. Well, I hope you're enjoying a good cup of coffee this morning with me. We got some great questions. Wow. I mean, I mean, we are just stacked with questions. I'm having a hard time deciding which ones to go with. I'll probably save a few of these for the next Monday morning mailbag. But before we get to those questions, let's go back for a refill. <music> Well, there was a discussion in the last Monday morning mailbag of where to put the blade after you're done shaving with it. You're going to clean the blade, maybe pat it dry. Where do you set it? My, uh, my little tip was just to set it on top of the brush knot. Uh, after you've cleaned your brush, you can take your blade out and then pat it dry. And uh, with the brush just on your stand, you can just set it right on top of the knot. You can check that uh, previous uh, previous Monday morning mailbag and, um, you know, check that little tip out. But I had a lot of great comments from uh, viewers regarding what they do uh, in setting their blade aside when they're cleaning their razor and their blade, that sort of thing. Uh, Jim G. from, uh, from Northfield uh, wrote, Hey, Mark, I have two small disc magnets right by my mirror. After first use of blade, I place on first magnet. After second use, I place on second magnet. After third use, I recycle. The magnets remind me of how many uses I have had on the blade. I also stick it on the end tab so the blade completely dries. Thanks for your videos as always, Jim from Northfield. Wow, it seems that everyone was going along with this uh, blade and magnet kind of uh, holder. Uh, got another one here from Just Uncle L who wrote, an idea I have for keeping used blades safe is to put some stick-on magnetic strip on the wall or cabinet to keep them out of the way. Yeah, that's a, again, it seems that this is a common theme with a lot of viewers. Michael Damish, uh, or Damish, D-A-M-I-S-C-H. I don't know how that's pronounced, Michael. I'm going to go with Damish. Uh, he, he wrote, I have a little magnet on my shaved end cabinet as a safe place for the blades. So it's always out of the way and at the same place. Yeah, that's, that's really, again, <laughs> Magnus. Now, here's something a little different. Uh, Carmen Anastasio wrote, I recommend using a clothespin to dry out razor blades. Uh, enjoy your week. And I asked, well, how do you exactly, how do you do that? And uh, he wrote back and said, uh, sorry, Mark, squeeze open a clothespin, place the blade in between and close. Leave it on the counter to dry or on the top shelf of the medicine cabinet for those who have children. 
It's an option for those who do not wish to pat their blades dry. Another great, great suggestion. So there you go. Uh, you could place it on top of a brush knot. You can use a magnet. And a clothespin comes in quite handy when wanting to uh, clean your blade or let it, let it dry out. You don't want to pat it dry. Just rinse it. I guess put it in a clothespin or rinse it, put it on the magnet, and then let it air dry. Really, really great suggestions. Thanks to all the viewers for mentioning that. I pass it along to uh, other viewers and wet shavers out there. You might want to give it a try. Thanks again. Okay, so this next question comes from viewer Corey L. And Corey writes, Hey, Mark, still enjoying your channel after discovering you last week. Thank you very much, Corey. I really appreciate that. I've gotten two shaves in with my Vikings Blade Chieftain and Tabak Shave Soap. Great combination. Really like it. That's what I used early on. Absolute game changer for me, both the Chieftain and the Tabak. I followed up with an Ozma Allen Block and some Harry's Post Shave that I have left over. I'm new to using the safety razor and having issues around the bony part of my throat. Today I got pretty bad razor burn around that area. I did one shave with the grain and one across the grain, thinking maybe I just need to do the one with the grain only on that portion of my throat. Any thoughts on that? Uh, I can tell you what my experience has been, Corey. Um, I did respond to your post uh, on, in that video post there. I can't remember which video that was, but I did write you something, but I wanted to expound on it here for other viewers and just share my experience of what it was when I came back to the traditional wet shave. The uh, Vikings Blade Chieftain razor was the razor that brought me back to the traditional wet shave. I absolutely love this razor. It gives me a smooth yet highly efficient shave. My skin needed to adapt to the traditional wet shave over a period of a month or two. Uh, I was coming from the world of electric razors, which meant I was shaving dry. My skin was incredibly dry over a number of years, maybe even a couple of decades of not doing the traditional wet shave, just using an electric razor. So my skin had to adapt to the wet shave, the water, the soap, the cream, uh, the alum, a little bit of alcohol that's in the uh, aftershave, those kinds of things. And I found that uh, as I did the traditional wet shave, slowed down my pace with the razor. I mean, really took those two inch strokes and just really took my time, concentrated on my technique, found that 30 degree angle, again, lightened up on the touch and let the razor do all the work. All those things came into play pretty soon before I knew it, the shaves were getting better and better and better. And um, I wasn't having any of the issues that, um, that one might have with a traditional wet shave, a nick, a cut, a little bit of irritation, those kinds of things. Although I do think this razor for me minimized a lot of that. Now, this is rated neutral. The Vikings Blade Chieftain is rated neutral. So I guess on a scale of one to 10, that would probably, or one to nine, that would probably be right there in the middle, five. And that is probably the uppermost of the spectrum as far as razor aggression for me. I can't go, I can, I can barely go, maybe I can go to maybe level six, and that's about it. That's what I've learned uh, in using a lot of different razors. Um, although I have used some razors, I think I probably rate a little more aggressive than the Chieftain at uh, five and maybe, a, maybe even above six a little bit. But for me, my skin borders on the sensitive side, so I tend to stay at five and lower. I'm thinking maybe that's something you should do as well. I would give the traditional wet shave uh, time for your skin to adapt. That's what worked for me. That's, 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 one, that's one suggestion. Again, your mileage may vary, but for me, that worked. Uh, another suggestion is to maybe step down the aggression of the razor. Even though this is rated as at five, hey, it might be just a little too much for you starting out. Some wet shavers uh, that I've talked to get the Chieftain uh, or the Chieftain 5BC, and they use it right off the bat, and they love it. Uh, one viewer told me of her son. She bought it for her, her son as a gift. Loves it. I mean, absolutely loves the shave from the 5BC. No nicks, no cuts. No irritation, just doing a great job. Yes, I would say maybe back off on a few passes. I know that uh, with uh, any of the razors that I use, I'm either 
two or three passes. Sometimes if the razor is a little more aggressive, I'll only do two passes. Uh, sometimes it's a little milder, I need that third pass. So it's, it's gonna vary a little bit. And also the razor blade will come into play too. However, my suggestion to you is to possibly use uh, or investigate using a razor that's a little milder. Uh, I could suggest the uh, Merker HD34C. This is probably uh, maybe two, two and a half on a scale of one to five. One to nine, if, I don't know exactly where that would be in relation to the five rating of the Chieftain, maybe a three, something like that. But this is going to be a click or two, uh, milder. Uh, it also has a narrower, a much more narrow angle of approach so that you have to really be right on that angle to make sure, ensure that you're getting the maximum amount of efficiency for it. But it's a very good razor also for uh, beginners in that you can really, it really forces you to hone your technique and get that efficiency. Really a very good razor, very mild. Another mild razor that I can suggest is one that I just recently reviewed is the Turbo Razor from Global Shave Clubs International. This is a tribute to the DEA9 uh, by Edwin Jagger. The DEA9 is also a very good razor, but this is even a little bit milder and the efficiency is quite good. Much like the Merker HD34C, in my opinion, this also has a narrow angle of approach. So you have to really be right on that angle in order to get maximum efficiency, but it's very mild and uh, it gives a wonderfully, a wonderfully smooth shave. I did a uh, shave my head with this yesterday and no nicks, no cuts, no irritation. Really, really terrific. Now, if you don't want to spend anywhere from $25 to $30 for another razor, I can, I can recommend one more that gives a wonderfully mild shave, and that is the Lord Razor Blade. This is the, L, the Lord Razor. This is the L6. This is like five or six dollars on Amazon. It's a three-piece razor. It comes with an aluminum handle, so it is a little bit lighter. I believe the head is made from um, Zamac, zinc alloy, and is plated. So it is a little heavier towards the head, but I was surprised at how mild and smooth this razor is. For five or six dollars, you might want to try this razor. Put in uh, the, the blade that you're using, lather up with Tabak. Sounds like you're doing the prep properly, but give perhaps give this razor a try. For five or six bucks, you know what? You're not going to go wrong if it doesn't quite work for you. And then maybe work with this razor a little bit as your skin adapts and then come back to the Chieftain. Just a couple of suggestions there, but, but that's what I did. That's, work, that's what worked for me. I remember uh, after I got the Chieftain, uh, the uh, Vikings Blade introduced the Godfather razor, which was milder than the Chieftain. I got that. I used that, and I, I went back and forth between the two of those razors, and that really, really helped. I also acquired the uh, Merker HD34C as well. So between the two milder razors and the neutral razor, uh, really, my skin adapted quite well to the traditional wet shave and really brought it up to speed for me. A couple of suggestions for you. I'll throw it out to the viewers. If they have any other suggestions for you, please comment below and let Corey know. So uh, thanks very much for the question, Corey. Thanks for subscribing and viewing. Okay, this next question comes from a viewer named Stephen. And Stephen posted this question in the comments area of the 5,000 subscriber video giveaway. Uh, we're celebrating 5,000 subscribers on this channel and I'm doing a giveaway, uh, a drawing, and I'm giving away two prizes, two razors actually, courtesy of Global Shave Clubs International. The first prize is a uh, brand new fire razor from Global Shave Clubs International. And the second prize is the uh, Diablo Slant razor from Global Shave Clubs International. It's easy to enter. All you have to do is go to that video, subscribe, and just post a comment saying, I'm in, and you'll be entered for the drawing. Now, I didn't answer Stephen's question uh, in that comment section because I don't want to uh, throw off the, uh, the names for the drawings and that sort of thing. I don't want my name coming up multiple times and you know possibly tainting 
the drawing in some way. So I've refrained from answering any of those questions, but I'm happy to answer your question here this morning, Stephen. And this is what Stephen wrote. He said, okay, I'm in. And how do you get your head to look so good? Well, thanks very much. I don't think my skin is all that great. I know I've had uh, horrendous skin problems going through my teenage years and even after that. But uh, I will say this, that I like to use a good, mild safety razor when I do a head shave. And I like to use a really, really good shave soap. I like to use a brush, uh, get a good lather, do all that proper prep. But the key for me has always been to use a good, mild safety razor. There have been times where I have tried to use something a little more aggressive, and it just hasn't worked. It, it's resulted in either a, a nick or a cut or a weeper when I start using more aggressive razors. And I think last week I mentioned that I had a little weeper up here from a razor that was just a little too aggressive for me. Or maybe I had an adjustable razor that I set at too high a level. I can't remember. But the point is, is that as long as I keep the razor on the mild side and I use a good, good shaving soap, something like, uh, well, I love uh, Phoenix Shavings uh, Shave Soap. This is uh, a new puck of future fiction that I got recently in Formula CK6 right there. Love this stuff. And uh, this has been great for me. Uh, for both head and face shaves. So as long as I use a good shave soap, I do the proper prep, and I use a mild razor. As I mentioned, I used the uh, Turbo Razor yesterday to do a head shave. This rates on a scale of one to five, about a two, two and a half, something like that. Nice, mild, yet efficient uh, shave with it. Now, from time to time, I will use uh, a cartridge razor like a Mach 3, uh, but I limit the number of blades in the cartridge head to three or less. And every once in a while also, if I'm pressed for time and I want to do a head shave, I'll use this guy right here, the Omni Shaver. I don't know if you remember, I reviewed this. You can get a head shave in about four or five minutes with this. Uh, and it's terrific. And it really does a nice job. This, even though it has multiple blades in the, in the cartridge head, they're very mild. They're seated in such a way to be more mild, so you have to press a little more in order to get the efficiency from it. But no nicks, no cuts, no irritation with this. Uh, so I'll use this as well from time to time uh, to do my head shave. But I will say this, um, that since I've been doing the traditional wet shave on the face and the head, uh, I've gotten some nice comments uh, from people. More often than not, ladies, young ladies, ladies of all age groups will say, hey, your skin looks really, really nice. And again, I don't think my skin is that great, but I think the overall appearance of it has greatly, greatly improved since doing the traditional wet shave. The other thing that I do is I make sure to use a good balm uh, to follow up uh, my head shave and my face shave. So after every face shave, I'm following up with a balm uh, a little bit on the face and also on the head every single day. Uh, after every single wet shave, whether it's face or head, because, well, right now it's winter. We're in dry skin season, so I make sure to moisturize up there. And one of the better ones that I've come across, I like these a lot, uh, is, are the Star Jellies from Phoenix Shaving. These have been, uh, these have been great, and I, they come in a variety of scents. Obviously, the Future Fiction, I just showed you the shave soap. Club Guy, their homage to Clubman. Um, I like these a lot. As a matter of fact... Uh, in using an aggressive razor, a razor that was overly aggressive for me, that was the R41. Uh, where is it? You know what? Hang on. <laughs> Let me get the, no, it's not the R41. It's the R102. Let me get that. Hang on one minute. I'll be right back. Okay, here it is. I try to, I try to set everything out here that I'm going to talk about. And every once in a while, I mention something that's not here. So, uh, here it is right here. This is the Mula R102, which is actually an R41 with a different handle. This is the R41 razor head uh, on a different handle, a pearl white handle. And it's very aggressive. It's very aggressive for me. And the other day I was shaving with it and I thought, okay, I'm going to kind of push the envelope here a little bit and do a third pass, which I probably should have not have done. And I, I nicked myself just a little bit here. Uh, on the just right here, you know, on the upper lip right here. And I nick myself a little bit. And um, 
it was okay. It kind of turned into a little bit of a weeper, but the thing that really, really helped heal it up, you could probably see it's healing up, uh, has been these balms right here. This has a lot of good skin food in it, and these have helped wonderfully, wonderfully well. They also helped with that little weeper up here on my head that I had last week, and it's gone. It's completely gone. These have been great. Uh, so uh, these these balms coupled with a good shaving soap like uh, this, which is Formula CK6, this gave me a lot of protection this morning in doing a shave with a, uh, a new razor blade, as a matter of fact. Where is my razor blade? Yeah, uh, these right here. I'm going to be reviewing these. these are, I'm going to have to edit the uh, video here. The Voscon razor blades. Uh, sharp and smooth. I used it in a milder razor. And again, that protection really, really helped not open this back up. It's been healing. So I think a combination of the, the soap, a good shave soap, and these balms uh, have really, really paid big dividends, not only for my uh, face shaves, but also for my head shaves. So as long as I stay on the mild side, for me, uh, you know, my head will, yeah, my, my head shaves will look pretty good. They will really, they really will look pretty good. Although I am tempted to, at times, try to use a more aggressive razor. And you know what? I just, I, I should just stay away from that. So as long as I'm at neutral and milder, I'm okay, Stephen. So you might want to try to find a, a razor that is more agreeable if you do a head shave, is more agreeable for your head shave. Um, maybe not go very, very aggressive. For me, it's a mild razor, two passes and a little bit of touch up. As long as I got a good, good protective uh, shaving cream and a good lather, uh, I'm fine and a mild razor blade. That's kind of been my formula. So I hope that answers it. And uh, thanks very much for the question. Well, as long as we're talking about aftershave balms, uh, this question fits in really nicely. It's from viewer Chris Anderson. And Chris writes, I was really surprised to hear Mark say that Stetson is alcohol free. It does not feel that way to me. According to the ingredients listed on Amazon, the first ingredient is denatured alcohol. I don't see any claim to be alcohol-free on the bottle, so I think the folks at Stetson are honest. It has a nice smell and is economical, bought in mine at Walmart, so readily available. Well, thanks very much for that, Chris. I stand corrected. You are absolutely right. The Stetson Cooling Moisture Aftershave, which I reviewed and featured, does have a little bit of alcohol in it. Now, on Amazon's product page, and Chris also double-checked this, Amazon product page, denatured alcohol is the first ingredient listed, which means it's got alcohol. On the bottle and the ingredients here on the back label here, I don't know if you can get a shot of that. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. Denatured alcohol is like maybe the 17th or 18th ingredient listed out of maybe 23 ingredients. So that tells me that it has a little bit of alcohol, but it's not alcohol free. Now, uh, I appreciate that. I stand corrected and I apologize because I didn't read that far down the label when I did the original review. I just looked at the first several ingredients and thought, oh, hey, it's alcohol free. So I do apologize uh, about that, but I'm happy to clarify it. Now, this also comes into play with the previous questions regarding a little bit of razor burn, the head shave, that sort of thing, and the... Uh, uh, the balms that I use. As a matter of fact, I believe these have just a little bit of alcohol. However, this is just uh, something that I did when I came back to the traditional wet shave. Every once in a while, I would refrain from using an alcohol-based aftershave or balm. Uh, and then I kind of moved back into using something with a little bit of alcohol. That's just something that helped me in adapting and coming up to, up to speed with the traditional wet shave. Uh, so every once in a while, if you're a new wet shaver out there, I would say try to possibly stay away from an alcohol-based splash uh, at first. Just stick with a balm that doesn't have any alcohol in it, and then maybe work it in slowly into your shave. Maybe get a balm like, uh, like the, the Phoenix Shaving Star Jelly, uh, that has a little bit of alcohol in it. And if I, I hope I'm correct on that, I think it does have a little bit of alcohol in there. But the point is, 
get something that has a little bit of alcohol in it. This might have a little bit of alcohol in it. This has great moisturizing qualities, which is why I thought it was alcohol-free. Get something that has a little bit of alcohol in it and just kind of ramp up slowly over time. And before, you, and before I knew it, I was using an alcohol-based splash and uh, all kinds of great bombs and you know, my skin adapted and came up to speed. So I do apologize, Chris, for the error. I'm happy to um, correct it. Thank you for pointing it out. I really appreciate it. Okay, so this next question comes from Ron Culliner, and it kind of fits in with our discussion of razors and blades. And he writes, hi, Mark. This question is something that I've been pondering about. When counting the usage of a DE blade, should we be counting the usage of the number of passes used in the shave? In other words, if I do a three-pass shave, is that considered three times that I used the blade? I think most wet shavers would consider that only one use of the blade, but maybe we shouldn't. Most DE blades are meant to be used just one shaving session and tossed out thereafter. But of course, your mileage may vary. Well, Ron, um, I've pondered that early on as well. I've come to learn that if I'm using a razor blade, uh, if I do a two-pass shave or a three-pass shave, for me, that's one use of the blade. And I'll set it aside, and I'll use it the next day for another shave, whether it be two passes or three passes. Now, I've always said blades are incredible incredibly inexpensive. Now, you saw these Voskod blades I talked about. A hundred of these is uh, eight bucks. That's it, $7.99 uh, from Amazon Prime. And uh, that is cheap. If you use each of these blades for just one shave, that is one shave of two or three passes and you toss it, that's eight cents a shave. If you double that, say use it twice, say two days in a row, uh, a three-pass shave, and maybe the next day a two- or three-pass shave, then you're looking at four cents a shave. Well, whether it's uh, eight cents a shave, four cents a shave, or lower than that, it's still incredibly inexpensive. Now, I tend to use my blades uh, two to three times. Um, that is, uh, I'll take a blade and I'll do a, a shave, two or three passes, and then the next day I'll use it again, two or three passes, and the next day I'll use it again, perhaps for a head shave, which is about two passes and some touch-up for me, and then I'll toss it. There are times, however, when I use a blade only once, and that usually comes when I'm reviewing some shaving gear on this channel, and I like to put in a new blade. So if I'm recording video back-to-back, uh, -back, that is uh, maybe uh, on one day and then the next day I'm doing another video, I'll pop in a new blade just to use a new blade. Now, if you're like me, just from doing the traditional wet shave and wanting to try different razor blades, you've probably got razor blades coming out of your ears. <laughs> I know I do. And whether it's just from buying samplers or buying another hundred to try out, you, you, you tend to acquire a lot of blades. So um, yes, I probably could use a razor blade for one shave, whether it be two passes or three passes, and toss it for recycling, uh, and then use a, a brand new blade the next day. Now, I also have to say, I like using a new blade as often as possible. So, I'm two to three uses on a blade, uh, whether the shave be two or three passes. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three. It also depends on the quality of the blade as well. Some of the top shelf blades that I use, like the Vikings Blade Mild Blade or the Cayenne Hot, those I can use for like five or six shaves. Those are really terrific. Uh, so some of the higher end blades, yeah, I tend to use a little bit longer. Um, some of the lower bargain, bargain blades, maybe one shave, maybe two shaves, that sort of thing. So it's going to vary. And I think it's going to be a your mileage may vary from wet shaver to wet shaver. But uh, interesting question. Put it out to the viewers. If you have an opinion on this or you have your own guidelines, please comment below and let us know. Thanks again, Ron. Okay, and wrapping up, this last question comes from Michael Pierce via Facebook. And Michael wrote, could you name your top five must-have adjustable safety razors? I'm looking at another one besides the Rockwell 6C. 
Hopefully you and your family are staying safe during these tough times. Thanks very much for the uh, good wishes, Michael. I really do appreciate it. And uh, Rockwell 6C is a terrific razor. Uh, I have the 6S, and in some ways it is an adjustable razor, although not traditionally like an adjustable razor. But it's a great question and allows me to kind of go over some of the adjustable razors I have. And as far as must-haves, yeah, I got a couple here that are must-haves. But let me talk about um, some of the razors I do have. I guess they all could go into the must-have category. Um, again, from Viking's Blade, uh, either the Emperor or the Crusader. Yeah, I think these are must-haves because of their solid build, uh, the fact that they have asymmetrical shaving heads where one side is, uh, well, this is a sculpted and this is a, uh, I think it's, you call it a scallop. This is a sculpted here and a scallop here. And then when you turn it around, you've got the straight and straight here. So it's an asymmetrical, just for that quality alone, I think it's a must have because when you do the shave with either of these razors, uh, you don't have to adjust downward, uh, right in the middle of a shave. I know that I can shave my cheek with the uh, scalloped side and then just flip it and then go to the neck and get just slightly, slightly milder on the straight side. And I also use it as a traditional razor, um, just flipping it back and forth. Uh, these are great because uh, continuous um, adjustment, which means you can adjust from four to four and a quarter, four and a half, four and three quarters, then five, that sort of thing. And it's also twist to open, very easy to load a blade. And again, terrific, terrific weight and heft. So yeah, I would say that if you're looking at adjustable razors and you want to add to your collection, yeah, the, either of these is must have. Love them both. They come in frosted chrome and uh, some other great, um, well, great color schemes. This is the Augustus. And it's just, you know, they're just terrific. I like them a lot. Uh, another must-have, I think, uh, for adjustable razors is this one here. This is the Merker Progress. This is really a retro-looking razor. I don't think it's changed since they introduced this in the middle 1950s. Now, a lot of wet shavers don't like this, this uh, off-white knob here, this plastic knob. But if you, um, if you look at German automobiles from that period, 1950s, 1960s, they had knobs and dials on the dashboards that had this kind of color and, and uh, this kind of material. So it's kind of, could be kind of an homage to those German automobiles. I don't know. But I believe this was introduced in the 19, middle 1950s. If any of the viewers out there know specifically, please comment below and let us know. It gives a wonderful shave. And uh, I would say this is absolutely a must-have for the nostalgia quality. Now, like I say, a lot of wet shavers don't like this knob, and they'll actually have it modified and have a, a different, like a plated knob uh, installed here by uh, folks online who do that sort of thing. I, I really have come to really like this knob for that nostalgia retro kind of look. It gives a wonderful shave, and I think it's also on the list of must-haves. Um, in the same, in the same way or in the same design, the Parker variant, which is very much similar design to the Merker progress that I just showed you. Although this has a more traditional knurling on the handle, it has a knob that matches the body and overall, and it gives another, another great shave. Um, a little longer, a little heavier than the standard Merker Progress, but this is also a very, very good uh, adjustable safety razor. A lot of wet shavers like this a lot. I think it's up for debate which one gives a better shave. That's entirely up to you. Your mileage may vary, but I think this is another one that uh, is going to be around for years to come, and a lot of people regard it as something that... Uh, is prized. I think. I think a lot of a lot of wet shavers really like this Parker variant. Um, this next one, I absolutely believe, should be on everyone's must-have list, and that is the Merker Futur. This is not so much a razor as it is a shaving instrument. Boy, this is terrific. When I first got this, love the heft. 
Love the overall look of it. Very futuristic. Somewhat shavers feel that this razor head is a little too large and unwieldy. Um, when you compare it to, say, uh, the Crusader, you can see the Crusader has a much more maneuverable razor head than the Futur. Um, but the end tabs here are enclosed. It's a two-piece razor. The cap pops off like this. We talked about that, I think, in a previous Monday mailbag. But it's uh, continuously adjustable. The entire handle turns. Just, or just feels great in the hand. Looks great. Very, very solidly built. Uh, it is terrific. Now, these are, have increased in price uh, over the years. I think something like this in the polished chrome is probably $70 or $80. I think the matte finish is a little lower, like $60 or $70. And I think gold is probably about $115, something like that. I'll provide links below so you can inspect those prices because it's going to change from time to time. But if you can afford this, terrific, terrific razor. Um, if you want to test the actual design and configuration to see if it works for you, you can always buy one of the clones that are out there. I've got the Q-Shave clone, and I think you can get this from anywhere from $15 to $20 on Amazon, even lower on, on AliExpress. Now, um, you know, blade balance uh, might be a little off on some of those, on some of these clones, depending on the price, but this will give you an idea of how the Mercur Futur shaves. The weight is a little, it's a little, it's a little less weight, but has the same kind of look and feel as the Mercur Futur. Um, so if you want to do that first before you invest a lot of money to see if uh, you're going to like it, um, you might want to go with this. But you know what? I, I just think it's a must-have. I think that the Futur is absolutely a must-have. And again, I just want to qualify those comments by saying there are some, of, some wet shavers out there who will buy this and not like it. I happen to buy this second hand from somebody who really was excited, uh, I'm assuming was very excited about having it, shave with it two or three times, decided they didn't like it, and put it online, and uh, I snapped it up. Uh, so, you know, there's always that kind of situation as well. And last but not least, I think that if you're a wet shaver, uh, the one or two razors that you absolutely must have is a vintage Fat Boy from Gillette. Absolutely. This one was given to me very generously by viewer Jim G from Northfield, Northfield, Ohio. And he wrote me and said, Mark, every wet shaver has to have a Fat Boy. And I absolutely agree. Uh, this is a great razor. I love the heft. I love the feel in the hand. I love the, the chunky quality of the design. Love this uh, quarter turn to lock everything in place. Uh, twist to open. It clicks adjustable. Uh, it's just a really just a neat, nostalgic razor to have. And if you can't find a fat boy or if the cost is prohibitive, then by all means, get a Gillette Slim, which was introduced after the Fat Boy. Uh, same kind of look, only it's, only it's a little more slender in the handle. But again, it's got that quarter turn and um, twist to open, click adjustability. Uh, really just a neat, neat razor to have. And uh, when you think about it, these razors... Either one of these razors are, you know, 60 years old plus. I mean, my gosh. Uh, and look, they're still giving great shaves. Boy, these things were really, really, really well, well made. Now, one other thing to mention, is if you can't find a, a fat boy and you'd like to try a fat boy, just know that Global Shave Club International made a replica of it in the fat guy. And they did a terrific job. I mean, look. I mean, look at that. I mean, it looks identical. And you can... There are various reviews about uh, online regarding this razor. And again, it's got that quarter turn to lock everything in place. It's twist to open. It has the, uh, you know, click adjustability. Uh, it really is a nice replica. So if you can't find a fat boy at an affordable price, you might want to look at this. Hopefully they're still available. 
I did a review on it. I really liked it a lot. Uh, the reviews are going to vary from user to user. There are some reviewers out there who are a little more in the know with the technical aspects of this razor. I would refer, I would refer you to them to see what their thoughts on it are. But uh, I've enjoyed shaving with this uh, a great deal. So that's kind of the breakdown of uh, the must-haves that I have uh, in my collection. And I hope that kind of gives you some insight, Michael, into what's available. There are some others out there that are available that uh, I don't have. And I would encourage viewers to comment below and list some of those adjustable razors that you have that you might put on your must-have list. Uh, to help out Michael and some other viewers if they're considering getting a new adjustable razor. Well, okay, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out the Executive Shaving Company. Use the code MARK5. Check out my blog, georgetoon.com slash blog for my comic strip George. Other cartoons, other videos like this, I'm on Facebook. Check out my Facebook page. Check out Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements for some great shaving gear. Check out Global Shave Clubs International for some great shaving gear. Check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Gerady where you'll find all the products I review on this channel organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.